thank you, Mike, uh, for the introduction. Uh, welcome to the uh, ComSol Multiphysics webinar for MEMS applications. Uh, in this webinar, I will start by giving you a short background on the ComSol software's uh, multiphysics approach. Then I will introduce you to the ComSol's product line and show you how MEMS simulations fit within this framework. And after that, uh, I will show you some examples in different application areas, all within the MEMS domain. And then I will also share a couple of success stories from our uh, user base. And after the presentation is completed, then Mike will open the session for Q&A. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. The ComSol software is uh, geared towards solving multi-physics problems. And thanks to this fact, ComSol can easily solve single physics problems. And if you really think about it, most problems involve more than one physics and are usually dependent on each other. And ComSol is ready to handle such problems then. Um, ComSol is uh, basically built around a core multi-physics platform and it can of course handle uh, single physics as well like uh, say electromagnetic fields, heat transfer, structural mechanics, acoustics and you can of course write your own equations in ComSol as well. And in MEMS or in microfluidics it's usually a coupled physics problem. So you can have different types of couplings like say uh, fluid flow with structural mechanics or heat transfer with structural mechanics and so on. And these kind of coupled physics problems can be very, very easily set up in ComSol and especially in the MEMS module. So uh, let us look at the ComSol's product line first and then we will focus mainly on the MEMS module. Uh, it's, it's good to know a little bit about uh, the ComSol's product architecture itself. Uh, so as I had mentioned earlier, uh, ComSol is built around a core a ComSol a multi-physics platform. And this is shown at the top of the screen with the red outline around it. So that's the core package, the ComSol multi-physics. And built on top of this core package, there are several products which are suitable for specific application areas, like say heat transfer, acoustics, structural mechanics, uh, computational fluid dynamics and so on. And one of the, the specialized products is the MEMS module. So say for instance, uh, if you're interested in MEMS simulations, then you would need the ComSol's base multi-physics core package along with the MEMS module. And these are the two things which are actually highlighted in red with a red outline uh, around those two products then. And uh, one more thing which you want to note in this slide are the products which are basically listed on the rightmost column. And these are products which interface with other CAD packages, uh, such as SOLIDWORKS, Pro Engineer, Autodesk Inventor, and so on. And if you're using any of these products already, then they can be used in uh, conjunction with ComSol. And you can either import the CAD object into ComSol and then do the analysis, or you can interactively parameterize geometric dimensions then with any of these CAD packages. And say, for instance, if you're comfortable with using a scripting environment, ComSol can also work in uh, parallel with MATLAB then. You can connect to MATLAB from within the ComSol's user interface, and you can actually use the scripting environment in MATLAB. Okay. And uh, now let's look specifically into the MEMS module itself. Uh, as the MEMS uh, name suggests, it's an electromechanical system in the micro scale. Uh, so a ComSol's MEMS product is very, very unique in the fact that it is packaged in a way that you can handle almost any simulations in the MEMS area. Uh, so when someone generally talks about MEMS, it at least involves two different physics, electrical systems and mechanical systems. And then there is also the fluid flow in the microscale, which is called as microfluidics. Uh, on top of all of this, thermal effects or thermal analysis is something which can almost be included to any of the physics. So that also plays a role. And all of these things can be handled by the MEMS module in conjunction with the base or the core ComSol multi-physics platform then. With all of this in place, you can solve problems which involve, say, electromechanical simulations or electrothermal simulations or even three different physics, like, say, electrothermomechanical simulations and any such combination of different types of physics. And uh, now that, that's basically the core of uh, how ComSol works and how the MEMS module works then. And now that we have seen how this works, and uh, let me show you some examples. And uh, I will show you some examples in, say, actuators, sensors, resonators, uh, some microfluidic examples. And uh, most of these things will be coupled physics. Okay? And uh, please remember that due to time limitations, I will be able to show you only a limited number of applications. You can find many more ComSol examples and papers on our site, which is comsol.com. 
and uh, let's get into uh, the applications first. Um, let me first start with a model of a thin film MEMS resonator. Um, as anyone in the uh, fabrication uh, or anyone who is involved in fabrication would know, uh, thin films are subject to some kind of a residual stress after the manufacturing process. And there are, of course, many kinds of residual stresses. And one of them is thermal stresses, which is, of course, a result of the fabrication process itself. If you're doing a CVD or a PVD analysis, and all the heating is going to uh, induce some kind of a thermal stress after the fabrication process is completed. And uh, say if you wanted to design a resonator like the one shown on the screen, then thermal stresses, if there are any, will alter the resonant frequency of this device, which is, of course, something which is not a desirable effect then. Uh, so this model is used to calculate the resonant frequencies of the resonator which has been built. And this is done by way of eigenfrequency analysis. Eigenfrequency analysis, when I say that, it basically means uh, someone might know it as modal analysis or, say, even free vibration analysis. Okay, so the first idea is to calculate the resonant frequencies of this device. Once that is done, you include the thermal stresses to this model and then recalculate your resonant frequencies. When you do that, you can see from the table at the bottom of the screen that as soon as thermal stresses were included in this model, there was a significant difference in the resonant frequency with and without the thermal stresses then. Uh, so what would any engineer do then? The idea would be to alter the design or the fabrication process itself to the effect of thermal stresses so you get the resonant frequency for which it was designed for. And then so the design is then altered. So you basically add some kind of spring structures or basically fold the legs or the flexures at the end so you can basically uh, remove any effect of uh, the thermal stresses on the resonant frequencies. So you redesign this and then simulate it again. Once you do this, uh, you can see again from the table, look at the rightmost column. You can see that there is actually no difference uh, between uh, the resonant frequencies with or without the residual stresses then. So this is exactly what you want. Even though the fabrication process has included some residual stresses, you do not see any change in the uh, resonant frequencies. And that's what the resonant frequency it was designed for. So COMSOL basically helps you design these kinds of devices then. Of course, I mean, if you wanted to do this by experiments, it's going to take much longer. So you can have a much better design to start off. Uh, and the next example that I wanted to show you is actually very, very common in uh, many MEMS applications. It's, it's a comb drive. Uh, this is yet another example of an electrical and uh, mechanical systems in traction. Uh, in this particular model, uh, the comb drive is electrostatically actuated. So uh, it can basically open and close, uh, say, a micro tweezer or something of that sort. Uh, before we go forward uh, explaining this model, I just wanted to mention that this model actually comes from one of our users uh, in University of uh, Manitoba in Canada. And uh, it's uh, by Professor Harush's uh, group in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. Uh, so let's uh, uh, take a look at this comb drive. Um, the entire structure is actually made of polysilicon, and it's a few micrometers thick. And uh, because of the electrostatic forces, the combs are attracted to each other. And there is, of course, a movement. And uh, this movement of the comb drive has an impact on the electrical field between each of these uh, different fingers of the comb drive, if you may. Uh, so to account for this movement, uh, COMSOL uses something called as a moving mesh, which is an ALE implementation that basically keeps track of the movement and translate the application mode equations between, say, the fixed frame and the moving frame. Then. Another important thing to note in this particular model is these the movements of the comb drives are relatively large. And these kind of large deformations, or say geometric linearities, can be easily taken into account in the MEMS module, or basically in general in the COMSOL software itself. And there is another point that I, have, uh, that I need to mention here in the slide is basically lumped parameter extraction. So yes, you can actually extract all the lumped parameters, capacitances, inductances, resistances, and so forth. And uh, this I will illustrate a little more in the next example that I'm going to show you.